I've been collecting miniatures like these since I was a kid. I didn't know at the time that they were for wargaming or role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons. I just thought they were neat. I liked them so much that my first casting session ever was to make these two figures. That helped a little too. It's something I've always wanted to try again, so all these years later, I'm finally getting around to working on that childhood dream. I've decided to recreate the Silver Knight from the game Dark Souls as a miniature, and of course, actually cast him in silver. The original in-game model was used as a base. Most of its details come from texture maps that give the illusion of more detail than what's actually on the model. I set about adding these details so they'll show up when 3D printed. Here's a good side-by-side -side example of the low-polygon game model compared to the details that I've added. The same was done for the rest of the model. There's some beautiful engraving on the shield and chainmail armor that needs to be added as well. A test print was made and compared to another miniature. Even though they're both the same height, I wasn't expecting the Silver Knight to look so small. I think there are a couple of reasons for this. The first is that features on a tabletop miniature are typically exaggerated. Secondly, I happened across a video showing off all the height differences of enemies in Dark Souls. The Silver Knight stands a good two heads taller than the player's height, so I made him to scale. With the model now finished, the Silver Knight was printed in Resinworks EasyCast 200. He came out pretty great, but the shield did have a few grow lines in it that I'll have to polish out later. The knight and base are sprued up, keeping in mind all the thin areas that metal will have to flow through.
investment is mixed and poured. It's then degassed under a vacuum to remove any trapped air bubbles. The flask is left to dry overnight. The next morning, it was placed in a kiln to burn out the original model over the course of 10 hours. This will leave a hollow impression inside the flask. Molten silver is then poured. A variety of different wheels and buffs were used to polish the knight's silver armor. I tried using some silver black solution to add a black patina to the piece. It works by oxidizing the metal, giving it a darker appearance. Antiquing solution looked great at first, but once dry it took on a dull gray color. Before trying something else to blacken the piece, I thought now would be a good time to add some gold-plated details. With the gold plating applied, I went back and painted the areas that are supposed to be black with alcohol ink. Thank you. 
A small piece of clear plastic was prepared for the stand. The back of it was spray painted black. This will give the top side a nice glossy finish. Finally, victory is achieved. The Silver Knight is complete. Hope you all enjoyed the video. I'm Nicholas DiMario of SterlingKisses.com. Thanks for watching.